This is a video that I have wanted to make for the longest time. A question I get asked all too often is, is it possible to see Ireland in just one week? The short answer, no. However, it is possible to see a lot of the country's highlights and a hidden gem or two, especially when you have a local guide like me. And that is why I've decided to create this guide, how to travel Ireland in just seven days. I suggest once you arrive, pick up your rental car and head straight towards the first stop, which is the wonderful Rock of Cashel in County Tipperary. The Rock of Cashel is one of the most famous ruins in Ireland. It costs six euro to enter and it sits on top of a hill looking out at the rolling green fields. Once you've finished admiring the beauty of the Rock of Cashel, it's time to drive towards stop two which is the amazing Bellarney Castle and Gardens in County Cork. Now, while a trip to Bellarney Castle will set you back 18 euro, it is definitely worth it because it gives you the opportunity to visit the castle and attempt to kiss the Bellarney Stone. And I say attempt because it's actually really hard to do. Once you're finished kissing the stone, you can spend some time exploring the beautiful gardens and the caves beneath the castle. Now before we dive deep into the video, I wanted to mention that I do have a detailed blog post on this topic, so if you would like to follow along with a written guide, the link will be in the description down below. For stop three on our first day in Ireland, I wanted to leave the choice up to you because honestly I couldn't pick between these two beautiful towns. The first option is the beautiful coastal town of Cove in County Cork. Cove is known for being the final port call of the Titanic and also has a striking resemblance with US city San Francisco due to its hill-like structure, deck of card houses and Spike Island which is kind of like Ireland's version of Alcatraz. A great thing to do in Cove is go on a boat tour because it allows you to see the town from an alternative perspective and it is a lot of fun. The second option is the colourful town Kinsale, it's also in County Cork and it's honestly like a fairy tale or something. This place is beautiful. Take some time to explore the colorful streets of Kinsale and then head for a stroll along the waterfront. Shout out to Cups and Cones because their donuts are absolutely delicious. Once you're finished taking in the beautiful views, it's time to head to the old head of Kinsale. This is gonna be your first glimpse of Ireland's wild Atlantic way and I promise you it will not disappoint. Once you've finished exploring either town, it's time to hop back in the car and head to your home for the night, which is Khmer in County Kerry. This is a lovely town to go for a bite to eat and enjoy some live Irish music. The second day of our Irish road trip is all about the beauty of Killarney National Park in County Kerry, with the first stop being Malls Gap. Malls Gap is a scenic driving pass that connects us to the second stop of the day, which is the iconic Ladies View. But don't worry, sometimes it can be hard to get parking here, but you can drive a little further up the road. There's loads of pull-ins there with an alternative view. The third stop of the day is none other than Torque Waterfall. It takes about 15 minutes to reach the waterfall from the car park and it is honestly so beautiful. Definitely spend about 20 to 30 minutes just taking in the beautiful atmosphere before heading to Muckross Abbey. This is one of the most beautiful abbeys in all of Ireland. It's really nice to walk around and it has a tree inside which is really cool. Also on the ground of Muckross Abbey is Muckross House. I recommend just kind of walking around, enjoying your time there and checking out the scenic lake. After spending the morning exploring the national park, I recommend you stop in the town to explore for a little bit and then grab a bite to eat. I recommend the Shire, it's Lord of the Rings team and it's absolutely delicious. Following a delicious meal, it's time to head five minutes down the road to Ross's Castle. Ross's Castle is a popular place to have a stroll around, explore the castle grounds and the surrounding lakes. It's also possible to get a boat tour to go out onto Clarny Lake and it's honestly a really enjoyable experience and I definitely recommend. Then it's time to head to the Gap of Dunlow. It's possible to park your car for free at Cape Kearney's Cottage. The walk itself is 11 kilometers there and 11 kilometers back. So unfortunately you won't have a time to do the whole thing, but I do recommend spending two to three hours exploring the area's beauty. You could also opt in to get in a trap and pony ride. This will allow you to see all of what the Gap has to offer in a shorter period of time. The final stop of the day and home for the night is Dingle Town. Now bear with me, it is an hour drive from the Gap of Dunlow, but it's worth driving there on day two because we want to explore the beautiful Dingle Peninsula on day three. On day three, I recommend waking up nice and early to explore Dingle Town and the harbour before jumping in the car to drive towards Slee Het. This is one of the most scenic driving routes in the country. 
And fingers crossed you don't get a foggy day like I did, but this is Ireland and we just have to be prepared for whatever can happen with the weather. The Sleahead Drive is the gateway to many gems in Kerry, including Kumanal Beach, Dunmore Head, and my favourite spot, which is Dunquin Pier. I recommend spending about an hour or two exploring the beauty of Dunquin. You can even walk down onto the pier to explore the crystal clear waters down below. Then it's time to head to Connor Pass. This is the highest mountain pass in Ireland and visiting it can make you feel like you're quite literally on top of the world. Now I must admit the drive is not for the faint hearted because it can be quite narrow in places but the views that make it completely worth it. The final stop of the day and home for the night is Doolin in County Clare. Now unfortunately it is a three hour drive so I do recommend stopping off in Limerick City for a bite to eat and to stretch out the old legs before jumping back in the car. Because on day four we're going to be using Doolin as a gateway to visit one of Ireland's best hidden gems. Inishore, the smallest of the three iron islands. The easiest way to get to Inishore is by taking a ferry from Doolin Harbour. This is an incredibly scenic way to reach the island and I'd advise once you arrive renting a bike and exploring for the day. The top places you'd want to visit is Plassey Shipwreck, Inishore Lighthouse, Castle Ebreen for epic views and Entra for those crystal clear waters. I'd also advise purchasing a combo ticket with the Cliffs and Moher, that way you can get up close and personal with Ireland's leading attraction. But don't worry, if you prefer to visit Inishmore, the largest of the three Iron Islands, I do have a blog post on how you can get there in the description down below. Once the ferry has dropped you off at Doolan Harbour, it's time to head back to your accommodation for the night, jump in the shower and then head back out for a night in the town. Doolan is a great place to go for a bite to eat and to experience some live Irish music. Day five of our island road trip is all about Doolin, the Cliffs of Moher and the Burren National Park. Start off the day by exploring Doolin town before heading up to Dunagore Castle. Now, unfortunately, it's not possible to go inside the castle, but it is nice to admire it from the outside. Then it's time to head on the famous Doolin Cliff Walk. It takes two hours to reach the Cliffs of Moher, but honestly, the views along the way make the walk completely worth it. It's then possible to get a free shuttle bus back to Doolin Town. I then advise heading on a little mini road trip through the Burren National Park. Stopping off at Fenora Beach for a nice stroll along the sand or maybe even a swim. I recommend you spend the night of day five in Galway City. This is a great place to experience a traditional Irish nightlife and just listen to some live Irish tunes. I recommend you spend the morning of day six in the beautiful Connemara National Park. Now bear in mind, on this day, we will be making our way back to Dublin. So if you don't want to do all the driving, there is organized tours around Connemara that you can take from Galway City. And I'll leave a link to them in the description down below. There's so much to see and do in Connemara, but I recommend checking out these three spots before making your way to Dublin. First, Pine Island View. This is a beautiful place to spend about an hour because you can actually get onto the island by walking along a stone passageway. The second on the list is none other than Sky Road. This is one of the most scenic driving routes in the country and you can honestly spend hours just checking out the beautiful views. And last but not least, Kylemore Abbey. This is one of the most photographed places in Ireland and it's possible to view the abbey from the roadside and from inside the grounds and it's a must on any Ireland road trip. Once you've finished exploring the beauty of Connemara, it's time to head towards Dublin. Now, this is a three and a half hour drive, so it is important to make stops along the way. Day seven is all about exploring the capital city. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on the top things to do in Dublin here, because I will be making a separate Dublin video guide. But in the meantime, I have left links in the description down below to my Dublin blog posts. This brings us to the end of the video guys. I hope you enjoyed and if you did, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hope you enjoy your trip to Ireland. Bye.